We are live on Learn for Life News on Monday, the 12th of November 2012. And welcome to the new program this morning. It's all live in real time from uh, Highgate, North London. And we're looking at Learn for Life News. This morning we'll be looking at network events on and off the line. Um, we'll be looking at Dawn Hollybone's blog on last week's Teach Meet iPad and the uh, excellent explanation of Ace Chat. We'll be looking at uh, creative computing sites, creative ways into coding and computational thinking. Probably one of the most creative coders ever is Why the Lucky Stiff, who was a Ruby developer who did a wonderful site for children. Um, we'll also be looking at fairy tales as a way into computing and uh, a number of other issues, uh, badges and assessment, everything you needed to know, and a set of uh, uh, government digital strategy uh, links that will show you the back end of the government's new digital strategy and how people and coders and developers uh, develop that. And that's got implications for you and for everyone in the future. And uh, we'll then be looking at a, a, another Michael Gove site and a couple of um, uh, posts specifically to do with the curriculum in Ofsted. Okay, so each and every one of us... Um, Every one of these links is going to go off on um, uh, a bit.ly address, so you'll be hearing that. And um, I'll just share this out on the web, and we go live. Right, the two links I wanted to point people to are um, bit.ly.com forward slash bundles forward slash ibeams forward slash b, and they are... Uh, to events bitlies. Now, I'm really, really um, determined to push out the events uh, linking people and communities to do with Learn for Life news in the morning. So what's really important uh, today is the fact that we look at events that have been or events that will be on and offline, joining together teaching communities. So the first one I want to look at is... Uh, the blog of Dawn Hallibone, who said she uh, listens to all these in her car going to work, so it's drive time. And it's um, the Teach Meet iPad uh, details from last week. And Dawn's blog, which is called uh, From Dawn Till Dusk, Games and Life, is bit.ly forward slash TM iPad Dawn Till Dusk. That's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, TM iPad dawn till dusk without any dusk without any uh, spaces in between and that's a little sort of uh, resume of all the different ipad stuff that went on at that meeting now the next site is about teacher networking online and really what is important here is that it's not that fact that things are online or offline it's to do with the networking that goes on so we're looking at the Association of Science Education, and this is bit.ly, that's bit dot L-Y, forward slash A-S-E underscore chat. Now, a chat online usually is a real-time chat for a limited period between a like-minded group of teachers in a subject specialist area or a generalist area. This one happens to be the A-S-E Science Education chat, and uh, if you go along to that site, it's the ASC, Association of Science Education, and they talk about the different uh, groups and online uh, chat sessions that go on. You can vote for the uh, different topic each week, and you can talk about the different things in the session in real time. And that's tonight. And uh, that's a virtual staff room for science teachers. And it's usually 8 till 9 p.m. UK time. 8 till 9 p.m. UK time. And I'll just give you the bit.ly again. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash A-S-E chat. Excellent. Get yourself along there if you're a science teacher or you're interested in science teaching and you want to talk through with other people. Okay. Now, the next section is all to do with creative computing, creative ways into computing. And basically... 
Um, these are about four different um, sites that have a really interesting take on computing and computer coding. I'm more interested in ways in through the arts into creative computing or computational thinking, uh, more so than other people, I think, possibly, because my background is arts, but I've also got a background in IT, ICT, and computer uh, science teaching in, in, in the past, and I have written a book on um, coding as well. So, the first one is a Vimeo of um, Why the Lucky Stiff, who was a coder who uh, developed a lot, lot of co uh, code on Ruby for kids. And um, he's, he's someone, someone uh, compares him to a collaboration between St Stanislaus Lem and Edward Lear. And if you know both those characters, um, he's quite an off-the-wall character. Um, he, he more or less committed suicide on the web. He's, he's still alive, but his, his uh, sites and everything else, he took off. People managed to reassemble them, but he decided to just chop all traces of himself. He was called Why the Lucky Stiff, or, and he set up Hackety Hack, and uh, his other name was underscore Y. This video is really interesting. He's wearing polarized x-ray sunglasses uh, while he's giving the talk, so he's a bit of a character. Um, I would draw your attention to that, and that is uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Why the Lucky Stiff. And um, that's a really interesting uh, video to look at. It's quite a long one, but uh, well, worth, well worth a look. Now, the next site, really do have to look at this one. It's Computational Fairy Tales. Computer Science Topics as Told Through Fairy Tales by Jeremy Kubica. And uh, this is uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash fairy tale computing fairy tale computing and it looks at um, the way of trying to teach computational thinking reflective teaching problem solving through fairy tales and taking it um, through characters and stories by level and just thinking about how for example here the popular post the Anton the grasshopper a, fair, a fable of algorithms all that kind of thing so that, again, is a really, really creative way in to computing. And that is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash um, fairy tale computing. Now, Dr. C Tom Crick's blog is always really worth uh, a visit. Um, his, his is drtomcrick.com. But uh, this, this one is about computing, the science of nearly everything, computational thinking and thinking about computing. And as he says, in the run-up to the 2012 CES Wales Technocamps conference, he wanted to draw attention to a concept that's increasingly praised for its wide utility across education, but really adequately explained, computational thinking. And he goes into that. So that's a good one. That's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash computational thinking. Surprise, surprise. And to end this little uh, section on uh, coding and uh, computational thinking and the arts, um, this isn't really linked so much to the arts, but it's a nice little site uh, teaching people how to learn how to code. It's Lifehacker Learn How to Code. It's got um, about four or five lessons, one in variables and basic data types, what two working with variables, arrays and logic statements, understanding functions and best practices and additional resources. So I'd get along to that. And that's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y. Um, forward slash trying to work out where it is well i'll give it to you it's lifehacker.com forward slash five seven four four one one three lifehacker.com forward slash five seven four four one one three i need to add that to the um, liquor eyes booklet of course all these links are linked into a text online document uh, through the liquor eyes site and you can uh, go to that and download it and that is bit.ly bit dot l y forward slash l for l news hyphen twelve hyphen eleven hyphen twenty twelve. We are also going out on Mix L R Mixler Mixcloud. We are archived to uh, YouTube and to Audioboo and to archive.org so that you can get the news anywhere you want. And of course, 
all these um, audios and uh, links are at Learn for Life L for number four L dot co dot UK. Okay, now people can't fail to miss that uh, it's been the uh, Mozilla festival on the 9th, 10th and 11th, the last three days, uh, down at the O2 Greenwich Peninsula. I said South Bank before, but uh, it's the O2 North Greenwich Peninsula. And one of the things that has come out of this um, are looking at badges and assessment. Now, this section, I wanted to sort of draw people together or point people to other people, because I think it's really important to sort of get the whole badge debate out in the open. I was on um, Twitter having a, 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 a conversation or a, or a sort of reflective moment with a couple of teachers earlier on on Saturday, and they were talking about badges. What are they for? How do we do them? And this is uh, certainly in the, in the primary space. It's a bit more... What are these for? So these uh, five or six links not only talk about badges and assessment and badges and making, but they also point you towards other people who are quite interesting. So this section is, if you want to go along and have a look at it, or uh, you obviously can't do that if you're driving or whatever, but if you want to go along and have a look at it uh, while listening to this show, it's bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y dot com forward slash bundles forward slash iBeams, E-Y-E-B-E-A-M-S, forward slash D. And um, the first uh, site I want to draw people's attention to is uh, a site looking at open badges. And it's a white paper on open badges at ob-awarenessmyknowledgemap.com. And you can download that uh, white paper about open badges and talking about Mozilla's open badges to give you a bit of background. And that is um, at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, badges open paper. That's the first uh, one I want you to look at. The second one that is strongly allied to that is the Doug Belshaw background on on open badges and and the thinking behind it and... um, thinking about exploring, creating, connecting, protecting, ties in with some of his um, theory about about badges and uh, the sort of uh, web literacies he's doing behind that. And that is um, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, forward slash, Bellshaw badges. Go and have a look at that. Now, there's uh, an also a very, very lovely... Um, DIY maker site, absolutely beautifully set out, um, which gives you a beautiful intro video, um, and that's uh, at DIY.org, and probably easier to remember that than the bit.ly um, address that I'm going to give out, and that basically talks about how you can earn skills and become a maker. Now, those are all the links to badging and badging sites. I could put give you far, far more, but I wanted to sort of think about pulling in some interesting reflections on allied um, thinking about this or theory about this in the wider space. And one of those is um, looking at um, uh, John Hattie's uh, sort of work. He, he's, uh, he's, he's written a book called Visible Learning. He's a New Zealand teacher. And um, this particular uh, bit.ly is bit.ly forward slash John Hattie one. And he talks about how he's um, looked at the effect of learning uh, on over 100 classroom interventions. And um, he looks at methods with negative or very low effect sizes. And he's come to the conclusion that, you know, you really have to be precise in your teaching, give directions. And it's a bit like sort of outward bound courses. These are the things that work, you know, instructional um, ways forward. Now, that's a kind of uh, theory that sort of corresponds to badge making, if you think about it. But on the other hand, I'm a little worried about that. Um, There are two videos, John Hattie 1 and John Hattie 2. So those are the bitlies. Um... And there is a counter to all his thinking. Obviously, it tell, says, uh, well, it's not just instruction. Uh, you have to think about um, the corresponding social context. And, and that's one of the things that John Hattie doesn't do in his theorizing. He doesn't really take into account social economic background. He said it's big. It's a big 
it figures big, but it doesn't really... Um, it's not the thing that counts for be all nailed all. And I think anyone who dismisses the social context is a bit uh, naive in that sense. So that one is quite interesting. That's a, a group of academics in, in um, Auckland who've written a counter to his, uh, his book, Visible Learnings. And uh, they are um, Ivan Snook, John Clark, Richard Harker, Amory O'Neill and John O'Neill at Massey University, Palmerston, North New Zealand. And that's quite an interesting one to look at. And that is um, Bitly forward slash invisible underscore learning. And lastly, the uh, the heads round table that I've been talking about in the last few days, there's a blog by John Thompson, a lovely reflective blog about um, what he's learned about uh, developing curriculum and assessment. And uh, looking at the English baccalaureate certificate, uh, uh, the proposals and how he's been involved in the heads round table because of those uh, proposals being pushed forward by Michael Gove. And he's got a very, very, very reflective blog about uh, curriculum and assessment. And I think you could go along to that and um, have a look at that. Um, that is uh, <clears throat> bit.ly forward slash curriculum blog. OK, that's the end of that section. Uh, it's a really interesting section. If you've got time, go and read it. It's bit.ly dot com forward slash bundles ibeams forward slash d right now whether you like it or not the government is going to bring in a digital strategy and um, this next section is about the digital strategy site and really i wanted to sort of give people pointers to the background in the digital strategy and um, how it was constructed. So if you're slightly techy or computer science minded or a uh, developer, you might find some of this interesting. Um, three uh, Bitly sites. So this is bitly.com bundles ibeams e. And the first site is obviously the government's digital strategy site, which is uh, at the publications at the cabinet office. And that is uh, bitly forward slash UK digital strategy. Um, this is quite interesting because um, this for the first time has been rolled out by developers kind of pushing out as a website. It's, it's a PDF, but it's also been pushed out as a website. And they've basically dropped um, documents through a process um, called Markdown into GitHub, which is a repository for a, the process of making software or sites or information. And um, to see how the process of that uh, works. It's good to go along and have a look at two views and mechanics of what is in store on that site, and that's bitly forward slash d capital d capital s and lowercase publishing ds publishing, and bitly forward slash d capital d capital s shipping. And those two sites are really really interesting. Um, they talk about uh, how the developers have pushed out and made the new government digital service. Um, some of the information on the digital strategy is that 18% of people are not on the web and not likely to be on the web. So how are they going to reach them with their, their, their strategy? And um, all the departments will have to have, by the end of uh, 2014, I think, a digital strategy in place or a, a plan for how they're going to put a digital strategy in place. Um, the last particular link in that site is um, uh, bitly dot bit dot ly forward slash gove be gone because it's a <laughs> it's a, a, an independent piece on uh, gove's obsession with the bygone era and this really is in stark contrast to the digital um, rollout uh, that the rest of the government is doing it says goes obsession with bygone era will fault pupils said school's chief children should be prepared for star trek society education secretary is told now um who is this person uh, attacking gove is it a, a a trot is it some kind of left-wing um nutter no it's louise robinson president of the girls school association which is the sort of um She's headmistress of Merchant Taylor Girls School in Crosby, Liverpool, and that's an independent school. 
And um, she says, you can't be forcing a 1960s curriculum and exam structure on schools. These children are going to be going out into the world in the 2020s and 2030s. It's going to be a very different from Michael Gove's dream of what it should be. And the article continues on. So uh, that's the digital um, uh, strategy site with um, a counter there thinking about how far out of kilter some people think Michael Gove is. Right. Our penultimate link is one resource, and I don't usually put up resources on the broadcast, but this one is brilliant. I, um, I came across it as someone tweeted it out from the um, MozFest site, and it's press books. And basically, it's a simple ebook maker and a whole ecosystem to do with ebooks. Yes, you've heard it before, but this is an open one. This is an open system. So you print it on the web and you can print it wherever you want and you can also sell it through a whole system all set up through um, through Mozilla and WordPress. It's a very, very clever system. It's, um, uh, let me just go to it, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Pressbooks, but basically the URL is pressbooks.com, and um, you can make ebooks and print books and um, any device, web books for accessibility and promotion, PDFs, uh, print on demand, and they have a distribution services to get your books into Kindle, Apple iBooks, Nook, and other retailers. Or you could do it yourself. So Pressbooks is built on WordPress and it's as easy as blogging. And I really would urge you to sign up and get your kids writing books. And the very last section today, before we sign off, is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Ofsted Trust. And basically, this is a lovely piece by one of the secret teachers that write for um, the, T the Guardian. And it's, Dear Ofsted Inspector, I'm giving you notice to improve. Now, this really is why... Um, Ofsted is not trusted by the teaching force. Um, it's a lovely, lovely article about um, what uh, this maths teacher, in this case, uh, wanted uh, the inspector to do and how he prepared and how confident he felt. And he was one of those teachers who is very confident and very self-assured within the school, knew what he was doing, but uh, didn't get an outstanding. Um, the reason he didn't get an outstanding, well, I'll let you read the article. It's uh, bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Ofsted Trust, and um, it gives you a spring in your step. So go along and read that this morning. If there's one thing you do read, read that. And I wish you a very good week, working hard in your classrooms, preparing our children for the future. I've got every faith in the teachers out there listening to this, and I wish you a very good day. Bye now. <laughs>